Hey everybody, welcome back to the History Freak. This is the second part on Elizabeth I. We're going to start off by looking at how Elizabeth dealt with the constant call for her to be married. The marriage issue was one that Elizabeth had to deal with constantly. Her council strongly urged her to marry a European prince. Opinion was that the main role of a ruler was to prevent invasion and civil war and produce an heir to continue the line peacefully. To fulfil this second part, she must be married. Elizabeth, having seen the situation Mary had with Philip of Spain, was hesitant to marry due to problems that could come with it. She became a master at stalling and giving non-committal answers choosing to keep the power to herself. By keeping people always guessing about marriage, she kept control. The council at one point told her, either marry or they would choose her successor. The problem was though, that they could never agree. Elizabeth cleverly made vague promises to keep them off her back and keep things how she wanted. One of the most important relationships in Elizabeth's life was with a woman she never actually met in person, and that was her cousin, Mary Queen of Scots. Both women believed themselves to be the true Queen of England. Mary was Henry VII's great-granddaughter, and Mary felt that due to the fact that Elizabeth had once been declared illegitimate as a child, the throne in fact belonged to her. Elizabeth and Mary wrote kind letters to each other, full of promises of friendship and loyalty, but there was suspicion between them always. Elizabeth was shocked by events involving Mary and the murder of her husband, and the fact that Mary then foolishly married the top suspect for his death. Mary was forced by powerful enemies in Scotland to abdicate the crown and her infant son James was to become king. Here was another strong example to Elizabeth of the problems that can come to a queen for marrying. However, having Mary kept in England did not solve the problem of the threat she posed, as there were plots to remove Elizabeth and put Mary on the throne. Mary was Catholic and therefore someone for Catholics to get behind and support. Elizabeth kept Mary prisoner for nearly 20 years and of course Mary grew huge resentment towards the English Queen. Elizabeth had a very strategic mind and liked others to do her dirty work while she could pretend innocence. It's even said that Elizabeth wanted Mary poisoned so she would die without making Elizabeth look responsible. Elizabeth's top counsellors, Cecil and Walsingham, were strongly against Mary and were on constant lookout for evidence to use against her. Walsingham was particularly shrewd. Known as the Spymaster, he worked tirelessly to learn of Catholic assassination threats to Elizabeth. To help him, he employed a network of spies across Europe and used people at all levels of society. Bribes, blackmail and torture were methods used to get the information he needed. He discovered the Babington Plot, a plan to kill Elizabeth and put Mary on the throne. He got hold of a letter she had written showing support for the plot, and this was the crucial evidence he needed to be rid of the danger. Mary was put on trial, but she proudly played the Queen card, saying she could not be judged. She said the letters were forged. In reality, Elizabeth's counsellors would never let Mary live, and she was found guilty. Elizabeth, however, was terrified to kill an anointed monarch. This was due to the example it would set that a queen could be killed, and the danger of invasion from Catholics who wanted revenge for Mary. Eventually, she gave in and signed the death warrant. While many were happy about Mary's death, Elizabeth had a hard time with it. She wanted to take as little responsibility as possible, but Mary's death was the perfect excuse 
King Philip of Spain needed to go to war with England. Philip, who was Elizabeth's former brother-in-law, was determined to take down the English Queen. He also wanted to bring the country back to Catholicism and put his own daughter on the English throne. Philip believed that God wanted him to bring Catholic peace to the world. Fun fact, Philip had actually wanted to marry Elizabeth when she first came to the throne. It seems their relationship was not initially unfriendly, although it certainly would go that way. The Spanish Armada was first seen heading towards England in July 1588. Beacons were lit to spread the message quickly. This was a time of great anxiety for Elizabeth and the people of England. As Queen, it was up to her to defend the country. The oncoming fleet looked intimidating, but the English used successful tactics to win the day. They used fire ships to break up the Spanish fleet. They kept a far enough distance so as to prevent the Spanish from entering their ships, and they successfully used better and more efficient cannons than the Spanish had, and it really hurt the invading army. The victory was huge for Elizabeth. She had already won the love of the soldiers by making inspiring speeches. The victory was even considered at the time to be proof that God was on hers and England's side. The people loved her, and she used paintings and symbolism to really seal the message that she was a powerful, wealthy, ageless, undefeated virgin queen with God on her side. The time after the Armada is often described as the Golden Age. Defeat for Spain was a disaster. Huge efforts had gone into the invasion, and it's thought that about 20,000 Spanish died in the Armada, or with the illnesses that followed. When you think about the fact that the population was so much smaller than it would be today, to lose this many people was a huge loss to Spain. This defeat did not mean the threat from Spain had suddenly disappeared. England continued to live in fear of Spain, and relations between the two countries continued to be very difficult. There were more battles between the two countries. Spain was certainly not England's only enemy. The Pope is even said to have called Elizabeth the servant of wickedness. The public image of Elizabeth was always very important. It seems Elizabeth was highly aware of this as she used symbolism in images as a way to communicate to the world what she wanted. Elizabeth's image was impressive and amazing. In a world with far less visual stimulation, it must have been a sight to see her when fully dressed in her huge dresses with makeup and wigs. She dressed so extravagantly to show her power and the difference between her and other women. It's thought that it took Elizabeth two hours to get ready in the morning. As she aged, she used lead to cover her skin. It's thought that this lead may have been slowly poisoning her. Elizabeth was so bothered by her own aging that it's said she avoided looking into mirrors. As well as her image, the label of Virgin Queen became very important too. One of her most important jobs was to produce children, but of course, we know this never happened. There does not seem to be a medical reason known why Elizabeth could not have children. The Virgin label was used when Elizabeth was in her 40s and past the age to produce children. Her virginity was used to show strength, and she said she would die a virgin. None of this necessarily means she was a virgin, maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, we'll never know. Even though Elizabeth seemingly didn't have intimate relationships with men, it doesn't mean she didn't love having handsome young men about her court. She loved to be flattered by these men, and even played them off against each other for her amusement. 
Many pretended to be in love with her and wore jeweled badges as a sign of devotion. It was probably worth the effort because Elizabeth's favourites could expect great honours. But as Elizabeth aged, these men of course started to think about life after her reign. With age, Elizabeth became troubled by her body and mind. As she grew older, she had mood swings, bad tempers, depression and medical issues. She could even be violent towards her servants. She had a lot of problems sleeping and there came a time when she was actually afraid to go to sleep. Despite the cosy image of the Golden Age, public opinion on Elizabeth did start to turn against her in later years, a fact that is usually not mentioned in the many movies celebrating Elizabeth's reign. With no child, her counsellors had to start thinking about who would rule next. The individual must be Protestant. After all the problems Elizabeth had had with Mary Queen of Scots, it would actually be Mary's son James that would take the throne. Elizabeth died in 1603, aged 69. She was buried in Westminster Abbey in a tomb she would share with her sister Mary. Elizabeth is absolutely remembered as one of England's greatest rulers. She is certainly one of the most well-known and loved monarchs in history. I think she was absolutely amazing. Certainly not without faults, but in a time where so few women had ruled before her, she did a great job in bringing peace to the country and, for the most part, keeping it that way. Unlike today, where we celebrate and love having a woman on the throne, the times were so different and views about women made it so much harder for Elizabeth but she managed to genuinely get the love of the people, and I think that's pretty amazing. So, let me know all your thoughts about Elizabeth in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, which I really hope you did, then please like and subscribe. And join us next time when we'll go back in time and meet Elizabeth's aunt, Margaret Tudor.